how, how it works will completely rely on you. We have asked before um, for some candidates for our quiz show. And um, I will give you, what we'll do is I will give you a short entry. Then we will call the candidates. We're lucky to have that we found four people. Uh, you see I've got some guests and uh, supporters here I will introduce to you. And then we will start with the show. Okay. So, um, you see that? No one has a right to obey. Um, this is a sentence, this is a quote by um, a quite famous German um, Jewish publicist called Hannah Arendt. And um, this is a quite important thing. This is like um, yeah, the mantra for uh, being a whistleblower. So um, it's quite the opposite as we experience there because everybody is expected to obey. But um, yeah, to obey is not the normal thing. So why are we here? My mission is to bring, um, let's say, more persistence in the uh, knowledge about whistleblowers. I'm not the super knowing everything guy about whistleblowing, but I'm, this is um, a thing which drives me a lot, and I try to know a lot about that. And I try to spread that knowledge, and I try to persist that knowledge. Because we have seen uh, that we are all victims of mass media information, which causes that things get in out here, get out there, and only few things stay. <laughs> uh, I don't mean you. Sorry. <laughs> I do just by chance looking in your direction. <laughs> okay. So, what do we like about whistleblowers? I ask myself, just to start with it, um, why do we like whistleblowers? Usually, if I ask the audience, uh, if, if I don't do that in the United States, I say, hey, anyone here who doesn't like whistleblowing, doesn't like whistleblowers, usually nobody puts his hands up. I can do it here. Anybody here who doesn't like whistleblowers? Oops, no one. Okay. Um, the thing why we love them is because we accept that this, these are people who really do things without caring for what it matters, matters to themselves. And that's maybe, this is, might be a definition for heroes, it's for sure the correct, I guess, definition for idealism. And we think people who are, have idealism have a high cred, uh, uh, credibility in the community. This is the typical item, icon for idealism. You don't? Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, this is uh, uh, um, the typical icon. We know all that. This is the most published photograph in the in the world, and this is an icon for idealism. And we found that, and we find that in many places. And it is quite important to have these kinds of icons because people can stick to this, or our th thoughts can stick to this. And as we see, getting into the whistleblower thing, this is uh, a photo uh, from a, a famous whistleblower called Perry Falwick, and. You see, this is a photo from 1972, and who's hanging there on the back? It's good old Che. This is our icon, I guess, now. We see that. And this is development to an icon, in a way, because we see that special picture, and we see that in kind of uh, graphical reproductions, which reminds a lot of what is done to the famous photo of Che Guevara. I would love to have that thing here running around in my hometown. OK. So why, why do we care? What does whistleblowers do for us? It's not only that they leak special cases which happen, let's say, in um, some country far away from us or, or near or far from us, but um, I believe and I think we all can agree that attacking freedom of information is just a starter to leading to other severe restriction of basic rights. These are two photos we from taken in Istanbul, Turkey, <laughs> and where we see what can happen if somebody doesn't respect uh, information freedom. In that case, was, it was in the day where they shut up Twitter, I guess. So whistleblowers, what they in fact do, they set us free. So let's come to the show and honor these guys. So I want to introduce the people we, who helped me. We got, because we got some really difficult questions, um, I've got an expert team by my side, and um, some of you might know them, so I would ask um, Oliver Sendel, Michael Kleinenz, and uh, give them a warm applause, because especially the eight people <laughs> who will need their help. Okay, uh, this is Christiane, because every good, good quiz show needs a good looking assistant. <laughs> Sorry for that. And she will. Okay. Every, that's the reason why we have Rob. But 
I thought about Rob being the um, making that assistant role, but I thought the better job for him would be uh, the judge above all, because he has the freedom to tell what's true and what's not true. And it doesn't matter what Wikipedia say, I want to say it clear. It matter what that man say. Okay, so um, yeah, if you'd like to explain a bit the rules yeah. and what okay. happened. Okay. Uh, so we, uh, we plan to have two teams of uh, four people each. We have uh, eight uh, applications and we hope that they are all here. We will, or Christiane will, will call for them and then we will put them in two teams. Then we will have uh, one of the uh, expert jokers um, assigned to each of the teams uh, by a coin flip. <laughs> and, um, the rules are we have, uh, we have planned to have uh, 11 questions, uh, yeah. um, five questions for uh, the teams. Then the best team is the winner of that round, the other team can. Uh, go back to their places and watch the show. Yeah. And then we will split the winning team into two smaller teams. I have three questions for them as well. And then again, the better team will be split in two. And then we will uh, have three more questions for the final winner. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. And uh, You got it? The questions are multiple choice questions. They have four answers. Uh, one answer is right, three are wrong. There's always only yeah. one right answer. And we will um, have these boxes in which we have cards. The cards have letters on them. A, B, C, D, E. So each team uh, can discuss as silently as possible and uh, hopefully nobody blows the whistle about this discussion with the other team. Keep uh, your phones out, please. Yeah, no, uh, no <laughs> smartphones during the quiz show for the, for the teams, of course. Um, then, uh, yeah, you put the correct answer, hopefully, in the box. Christiane corrects uh, the box when the time is up. You have one minute, I think, for uh, finding yes. the answer. And then, um, yeah. And then Christiane will, will decide. Collect, and he will decide. Right. Yes. By I think flip again. By flipping. So, um, yes, uh, and what I forgot is uh, there's something to win. So because, yes, I found some, oh, there's a prize. I will put it away. I found some books in a bookstore I prefer. Or not found them, I ordered them. And I tried to get some other books for you too. More, um, let's say, books you won't get in the bookstore. Because I, what I experience is, and this will be the matter of my, the issue of my next talk I will make, maybe like next year here, is um, what is the world according to Amazon and what's left out? And what's the rest of the world? It's a similar game like what's in Google? Is this really the internet or isn't, it, isn't there something out there? And I experience many books and many interesting facts are not. You cannot order them on Amazon. So, but we found some. So, um, this is one we give. Um, we have from Peter Shah, Überwachung Total. We have um, this machine killed secrets. And we have, for sure, no place to hide. So, and I think it's cool to have them on paper because so you can read it on the toilet, in the bath, or wherever you like. Okay, so. So I think now Katana can call the participants. Okay, so these four candidates are meant to take part in the red team. And this the first person is uh, Martin Gerhardt. Okay, for everyone who is not here, we need a substitute. Fast, please. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cool. Cool. Yeah, she's here, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Du hast nur acht gesammelt insgesamt. Nee, nee. Das. <laughs> nee, nee. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Michelle, Michel? Danke. <laughs> And number four, Thomas Hase. Thomas Hase? Ah, here. Okay, cool. So that's our red team. Okay. Now. Martin L. Martin L. Any Martin? Ah, okay. Oops. Rolf? Rolf? 
Any other, Rolf? Any? Okay, anybody who would be willing to step in for somebody who didn't show up? Okay, you, cool. <laughs> Shit, you might know better than Reed. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't matter according to the rules. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. That's, that, for that reason, we have rules. And last but not least, I need Gerd S. Oh, yes. Good. OK. So thank you. Okay, everything clear for you? Okay, so if you discuss the, the solution, I want to ask again, please don't help these teams. And yeah, please don't talk too loud about the solution and try to put it very secretly, the right thing, and, and turn the others down so that the others cannot find out what your solution was. Okay, so now we will start. Uh, we I, I, sorry, I forgot, uh, yeah. yeah. We you have, have to, to assign the jokers because the questions are probably too hard for you. <laughs> so, um, Michelin is the uh, number and Oli is the head. And I will be on the best team. Close to reality. It's Oli. You get Oli and uh, the orange team gets uh, Michelin. Yeah. So you both won. And um, the rules are I think that we can, um, you can use the Joker head twice. So there are five questions, and uh, in uh, two cases, if you don't know the answer, you can ask the joker, who will not tell you the answer, but give you some hints. <laughs> Otherwise, it will be okay. Easy. So and you have to uh, have to announce that you do that, so that the other team knows that you don't know yeah. it. Okay, so that they can laugh about you. That's more fun. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Try. Eins. Yeah, every good movie stops here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 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 So this is the first question. It's about Merkel phone. So we all knew last. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. 2030. It came pub became public that the, our German Chancellor Angela Merkel was wiretapped by the U.S. But this was by far the first time this has happened. This has happened before. And our question to you is, when was the first time that this happened before? Okay? And? Oh, oh, shit. Oh, that's too dark. The beamer is too dark. Okay, so I will tell you, and I hope you will remember. This will happen at every, each and every question right now. So. Okay, so it's A, it's in the 1940s. B, 1960s. C, 1980s, and D, I cannot see him for myself, 2000. Maybe we can dim the light, yes. Is it? Uh, okay. Okay, okay, we have, we have to do that. Okay, so you start. Forties, sixties, eighties, or two thousand. So, okay. Oh, we got one. <laughs> Okay, so our teams have found some answers. Might be right, might be wrong. Okay, might be right or wrong. So um, maybe we want yeah, first the answers, first the answers more, then uh, solution. More tension. So we have two different answers. Team Ooh. orange says B, then the 60s, and team red says C, here in the 80s. Okay, so. And what's the correct answer? Do you know? Of course, I do. 
I wanted to know if you do. So I the, do. The correct answer is B. Yes. 60. Yeah. 60s is the correct answer. According to our research, Elmer's research. Yeah, quite. Uh, known and people. checked and double checked by this guy, this research, so it might be really true. This is the book, and one of the books I tried to get to give it away today was these books, and but it's almost impossible to get this book today, um, like many other books of that kind. Um, yes, um, it's Philip A.G. This was the man, and he brought. He was a CIA uh, guy, and he brought out that the NATO allies were wiretapped in the 1960s, not only about military issues, but about economical and other stuff too. It was 1969, and um, okay, so the red team is right. Who, who? Uh, orange team. Orange team. Well, that's one. So my congratulations. Okay. Yeah, ich kann nicht darüber. I cannot decide who gets the points this man. Okay. Next question is related to that guy, Philip Agi. So, and this is a question. Where you, I, where you can just guess. I think nobody knows this. So, but I thought it would be funny to bring in questions you can, you can guess. Can you see that? It's five different countries he lived after he had to leave the USA. They took his passport away, which is quite the same which happened to Ed Snowden. So, took passport away. B, six different countries he lived. B, six. C, four. Or D, three different countries. He lived. I mean, he lived there. Um, he's until today. No, he's dead. <laughs> he's dead. And countries he lived, not he just uh, had a transfer on the airport. He just lived there. Okay. So five, six, four, or three. I for sagen Joker. Ich dachte, ich erhöhe die Spannung, wenn ich so rhythmisch auf der Bühne dabei auf und ab gehe. Also, ich sag mal so viel, er hat ein bisschen Pech gehabt bei, seiner, bei der Auswahl seiner Fluchtorte. <lacht> er hätte besser laufen. Oh, sorry, Englisch. He had a bit of uh, bad luck choosing the destinations. Yes, sir. Okay. Close and. Okay. Like this is from the other team. Okay. Okay. So. Ah, we have different uh, answers again. That's good. We have uh, C, four countries, as again from Team Orange, and Team Red says A, five countries. So, which. And who's right? Dum, 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 dum. Uh, team Red is right. Yes. <laughs> cool. Five countries, and we have to. Yeah. <laughs> five is the right answer. So, okay. Um, on this. Apart from a map, are not all countries he has, but these are the really, this is a really funny part, if you call that funny. So, what happened is he had to leave US, okay? He went to, um, to England, where he was, uh, I think, about two years, which is country number one. And um, then um, the, that guy, what was his name? Kissinger. <laughs> we will talk about him later. Uh, convinced the, uh, the British to send him out. So, he had to leave, and then the following happened from England to Grenada. Anybody remembers what happened there? Very, very small country. The, I think um, yeah, the Americans went there with the Marines because there was a socialistic uh, um, um, government there, and he had to leave immediately. So what did he? He left to guess where? Nicaragua. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. And <laughs> 
wrong choice. <laughs> wrong choice. Okay, you went to Nicaragua, you know what happened there, because at that time we went there, the Sandinistas were there, and then um, the American met that great invention of that uh, organization called Contra, if anybody reminds us, was <laughs> a really great idea. They, so um, in the end, everything's mean, happened in Nicaragua, and he had to leave. So he went to Cuba. As we all know, that America's best friend, the usual trick didn't work out. So they tried, but they weren't successful. That, so, that, so he could stay in Cuba. And what he did there, he, then he later married um, a German woman, a German ballet dancer, which brought him a German passport, and which made, enabled him to travel and between Cuba and Germany. And that, that's what he did the rest of his life. And he, in fact, he spent the most of his life in Germany and in Cuba, where he founded a, a travel agency, which was specialized on uh, making it possible that Americans who are not allowed to go to Cuba, find a way that they can get there and make their, their holidays. It's had the nice name Cubita Linda, which is perfect true, which everybody can say who has been in Cuba. Okay, next question. Okay, a more popular whistleblower, I guess. Anyone? Knows that guy? At least, I guess some of one have heard the name. This is Daniel Ellsberg, one of the fa most famous whistleblowers ever. So, and one of the most hated by the government of, of, at that time. And they're all hated, so it's a really challenge to be the most hated. So, <laughs> yeah, there's a film about him which is called The Most Wanted Man on Earth. And it's funny because you hear the, hear the same term attributed to other whistleblowers of nowadays, being most wanted, being the most something. Okay, so which US president is quoted here on Ellsberg? So what did he say? And what he said was, goes, he's Harvard, he's a Jew, and he's an arrogant intellectual. So without the Harvard part, could be a German who could have said it, but um, in fact, it was an American president. And was it A, Lyndon B. Johnson, B, George W. Bush, C. Richard Nixon, D. Ronald Reagan. The time runs. Lyndon B. Johnson, B. George W. Bush, B. As Bush, uh, C. Richard Nixon, D. Ronald Reagan. Okay, you don't need any help, I guess. I wanted to, it might help that if I say that the one who made it was a paranoid alcohol <laughs> consuming. <laughs> but you know that you can't help after the DMS. Sorry. I, I can't say he was anti Semitic at least. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, make. Okay, and. Okay, uh, what's going on? Hard on a hard on a bösen Bestrafung durch Rob. Okay, so. Okay, Team Orange says Richard Nixon. Team Red says Richard Nixon. And the correct answer is Richard Nixon. It was Richard Nixon. Yeah. Was. We didn't really charge for the score, but the score is now 2-2. Two, two. Oh, shit. So the camera can see it. Two, two. Both things. Ah, okay, yes. Yeah, the, 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 crazy, the crazy thing is that this quote comes, is, is documented, as I know, on tapes which were recorded in the Oval Office in White House because Richard Nixon was extremely paranoid, so he taped everything which was spoken in that room, which wasn't always good for him. <laughs> As you see, and the other crazy thing is, um, this was a set, first set two. You know that guy? Some might know him. There's some German relation to that. He's a quite famous, um, what's the, what's a uh, Kriegsverbrecher in English? War criminal. War criminal, and at the same time, he has the Peace Nobel Prize, which is really cool. This man is Henry Kissinger. Henry Kissinger is a Jew, too. 
So and the funny thing was that Nixon was asked, because he was known as anti-Semitic by his friends, and said, how can you work together with Henry Kissinger? And he says, uh, he said, why? And they said, he's a Jew. And he said, yes, 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 but he's different. <laughs> OK, so OK. Oh, oh, yes, um, we should do that because we, sorry. Did you get yours? OK. So I would like to ask that, say that we now have only two questions left for the full team, so you should use your joker if you uh, want to make use of it at all, yeah. of him. If you, if you believe in your joker. <laughs> so for which league did Nixon hate Ellsberg so much? Was it the Watergate Papers, White House Papers, Nixon Papers, OK, Pentagon Papers, and now, OK, he was an anti-Semitic alcoholic, so he could hate him for anything. When they danach, when they danach gleich sind, dann lassen wir sie so lang spielen, bis der erste falsch ist. Und wenn wir es bis zum Schluss durchziehen, oder? Okay, drei, zwei, okay. Die Zeit bis zur letzten Sekunde ausgenutzt. Nichts. And? Team Orange says Watergate Papers. Team Red says Pentagon Papers. And correct is Pentagon Papers. So we have a winner, is it? Uh, das ist ja die Foto gewesen. Bitte? Das war jetzt die Foto. Ah, das ist jetzt die Foto. Ah, okay. Okay, yes. Um, it was... Pentagon Papers, which, but which is true is that for sure Nixon had some relationship with the Watergate Papers, as we all know. So, um, which uh, Watergate, um, in fact, led to the f think first and only resign of an American uh, president in the history of the United States. So, um, and it was only a resign because he stepped back fast enough so they couldn't shoot him away. Um, or send them away, which is what they do in their own country. And um, yeah, the funny thing is um, this happened. Um, the Watergate thing, which has happened, uh, helped Ellsberg in the end a lot, which is the funny thing about this. this is the reason why Ellsberg came out free, whereas Chelsea Manning is in jail, where the Watergate papers, because without that, he would have been in jail. But um, Nixon said that Watergate, the same team which he sent into Watergate um, building, he sent to the psychiatrist of uh, Daniel Ellsberg to take, out, to take out the files which were on Daniel Ellsberg. And um, this came out in the, uh, when, he were, when Ellsberg was uh, in, uh, in front of the court, and this was enough to send him immediately free. So this helped him a lot, it was a good idea. This is the guy who uh, is, uh, took an enormous part in the leakage of the Watergate papers. Um, his name is Mark Feld, and he bought it out in 1972. Yes, and the special thing was, he's a special, uh, a special whistleblower because he refused to tell anything active. He said, I just will react on questions. With this. So, well, we have a question. What was the content of the Pentagon Papers? The content of the, penta, of the Pentagon, papers. Penta, Pentagon Papers. The Pentagon Papers were on the war in Vietnam. And uh, it brought us, yeah, next to some other things, one main thing, as I see it, was um, that the American public was constantly lied by, I think, four or five presidents on Vietnam, because they always say, we need some 50,000 guys going there from our troops and everything will work. And these things were in that all American presidents lied to the public and knew that they couldn't win that war. That was the Pentagon Papers. This was that maybe some... 
And there's an interesting movie on that, nicely. You can see that on YouTube. It's really, really interesting about that 7,000 pages he brought out. That's back. So, but what we want to do now is we want to know the secret name by which Mark Feld communicated when he was whistleblowing because he wanted to stay anonymous, which he did for quite a long time because about 30 years he stayed anonymous. The reporters, uh, Bernstein and Woodward, maybe somebody know these names, who, cre uh, who wrote that famous Watergate a story in the Washington Post, kept that secret. So, but the team talked, needed a name to talk to him, so they gave him a name. And this name was taken from, at that time, really famous porn movie. And as we are at a more or less uh, IT or a hackers conference style, we need at least one slide with porn relation. <laughs> <laughs> this is the slide with porn relation. So, what you have to do is now guess the name, which is Steel Balls. Was that his hidden name? He would have liked for sure. Deep Throat. Dark Room. Whoa. whoa. Or Hidden Treasures. So. Oh. <laughs> hey, these guys were on Wikipedia yesterday. Okay. This was um, 10 seconds. This was. So now we know the special area of knowledge for our teams. <laughs> The answer B, Deep Road, is correct. Both teams. Yes. Brings us two. Four points. Red team, three points. Orange team. So the orange team is out, unfortunately. As, uh, as uh, there was very, very slim difference only, but uh, there can only be one. Red team is uh, the winner of this round. And it has to be split. Yeah. So thank you very much, Orange team. How you split? In the middle. Bam! Dankeschön. Vielen Dank. Das heißt, wenn wir jetzt die nächsten beiden rausfliegen, dann kriegen wir einfach beide dieses Buch. Und dann okay. Cool. Okay. Das selbe Spiel weiter. Die dürfen jetzt wieder zweimal fragen. Okay. Ja? Viermal, also viermal insgesamt jetzt. Ja. Ihr seid ja jetzt ein neues Team. Ne? Ihr seid jetzt The new teams can ask their jokers for help uh, two times again. Uh, and uh, there are only three questions. So we won't accept any false answers. Okay. 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 So... Some of you might have seen that and had some fun with that. And me personally, I like these two things here most. SSL added and removed here, and cool is the smiley. <laughs> this is really nice. And this is more like, ah, oh, Triumph, we really made it, yeah. Traffic and clear text here. <laughs> okay. So this is where, these are original slides from that NSA documents leaked by Edward Snowden. And um, which question is, which country is proven to have created paid backdoors? So at least one of the four following is, if you might prove a second in one minute, <laughs> extra point. Okay, so it's RSA security. B, very sign. C, interest. D, IBM internet security systems. Proven. Yes, it's proven. Yeah. Believe me. Yeah. Believe me. Yeah. They, they, they don't deny it. They stop denying it. I think it's clear. Yeah, die wurde fotografiert, ne? Ihr seid fertig? Ihr made it? Cool. I doing Christian's job even if I'm <laughs> Oh. 
Okay, just in time. So we got two answers. Everybody plays RSA, <laughs> and they're right. Yeah, they're both right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's the random generator, yes. Has it been by intention? Yeah, at least they say, okay, you give me $10 million and I by chance manipulate the random number generator. <laughs> it could be, yeah, it could be a, a, a coincidence. It was for several years, it was in the software, and I guess from the Snowden documents, it's proven now that they took, that, that they had really a deal for that. Yeah, yeah. The, the funny thing is, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. So they, th this is really cool because this is the economic side, which is cool because they charge him for something they already had done. So, <laughs> but isn't it that what we all do? Yeah. Anyway, um, okay. Question number seven. So, a bit about Germany. Okay, which German politician had a spy in the stuff which was uncovered by WikiLeaks? So it's because the German secret agencies have other things to do, I guess, like uh, not finding Nazis or <laughs> so on. Yeah, <laughs> or covering, making cover stories. <laughs> yes, all that stuff. Okay, so now, was it, let's say, Thomas de Maizière, Minister of the Interior, Gute? You still remember Gute? <laughs> Sadly, we do. Wolf, Christian Wolf, no? Anybody remember that? Former president uh, of Germany. You don't remember? <laughs> you do, you do, yes. And Guido Westerwelle. So, which German politician? Um, the importance of the affected politician has no role in that question. It doesn't matter whether he had any meaning. Weil die hat schon einen schlauen Tipp gegeben. Okay. You have to come to the end. Four, three, two, one. Over. Okay. So, uh, the red team thinks it was Mr. De Maizière. Orange team thinks it was Mr. Westerwelle. And that is more correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's a two to one. No. Yeah. In fact, it was the uh, Westerwelle's chief of staff or his um, office manager. I don't know the English expression. And would, what did he do? He informed the um, US embassy about internals. And the later funny thing, thing is, they told later, this were only internals on the, uh, of, on the party, not on governmental issues. They later said, yes, there were something, something were reported, but it was only relaying to the FDP, which is totally, totally who, who takes care? Who cares for the FDP? OK, question number eight. Ich mache nochmal zurück, damit ihr da, ihr müsst ja genau zuhören. Oder könnt ihr? Ich habe mir für mein Eigen nicht nur Freunde gemacht. Denn ich habe eben äh, über die Geschäftspraktiken eines Kunden gesprochen, was man normalerweise nicht tut. Die wird es aber nichtsdestotrotz immer wieder tun, weil ich solch einen Verdacht nochmal haben, dass mit der Gesundheit unser aller gespielt wird. Okay. Gesundheit? He said, okay, uh, he was really. Um, 
to, wanted to take care about our own health and what he happened to see in his job was totally, uh, yeah, say dangerous. So which foot scandal was leaked by Miroslav Strecker? That's the name of that man. Was it Scruffy Döner? Was it Scruffy Fish? Was it Scruffy Sausages? Or Scruffy Eggs? Which foot scandal was leaked? Ja, Gammel. Gammelig, eklig, ekliger Döner, ekliger Fisch, eklige Würstchen oder eklige Eier. Wow. No pressure, but the others are still already ready. <laughs> Take your time. They didn't know it. They knew it. Yeah. Ah, B and C. B and C of our. Uh, B, C, B, C, and D were, were, were pawn, pawn answers, but there was no pawn question. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Und jetzt aber Schluss. Wir müssen echt. We have to be tight in time. <laughs> Short on time, no jokes. Hey, hey. Scruffy yeah. Döner, Gammelfleisch, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, two points for the red team, three points, orange team, orange team wins. Yeah. It was. Almost, almost. You can take some prizes with you. Uh, yes, yes, because. Uh, the second round. Yes, yeah. For thank you because you made the second round. Read it. Read it right now. Yeah, we do. We will do. You have. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is cool. Done. Yeah. Yeah, this is a cool book by. Yeah, we need a photo. Okay. Was für Kamerasäule. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, that Miroslav Schrecker was, he was just a, a, a lorry driver, and what he brought up was 150 tons of sc scruffy meat, which was delivered to Berlin and led to then, and some of us might know that there was a kind, sometime, some years ago, it was uh, the one euro döner. One euro food you could buy everywhere in Berlin some years ago. And this was exactly that meat because it was that cheap that they were able to sell for one euro a meal in the streets of Berlin. And this was just using. Yes, it was part, part of that meat was more than um, one and a half years old before it got into trade and was used. And he brought that up and he had difficulties. It's an interesting story because he had much difficulties later. He had many problems to find a job because everybody in the trade knew each other and said, don't took that, take that driver. So he was unemployed for a time. By today, he's a bus driver in Brandenburg in Eastern Germany. So, um, but it's really, really cool story. And really funny thing, who's ever interested in that, uh, you can find it on the web. He tried to call the police. Police said, um, we don't care. <laughs> it was a really interesting thing. And he watched the guy in the meat factory putting away the signs, this is not for human consumption. So if you didn't get a job afterwards, it could be seen as an indicator that everybody right. does it. So yes, don't. it is. Yes, and they, they, they really they sent him away. They took him, and after they knew that, they sent him away. So the crazy white-head Aussie, we can't do a whistleblower show without the crazy white-head Aussie. At least we should. So, yeah, he might be a matter of discussion, that guy, but and I think he's done a lot of good things. And that, so by launching WikiLeaps and one of the first major publications which reached worldwide attention were the publish, WikiLeaks published on the um, Iraqi war. And I guess most of us remember, but do we remember when?
it was. So you two. Was it 12, 2008, 8, 2009, 10, 2010, or was it 3, 2011? And off we go. 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011. Okay, one joker here. Do you remember collateral murder? Maybe that helps. Zeit. Neun, ihr kommt zum Schluss. Vier. Und jetzt. Game over. Okay, so. Uh, team Red says D, 2011, and Team Orange says C, 2010, which makes Orange the winner. Yeah. yeah. 2010 was the year where there were three big publications on, uh, on WikiLeaks. First was the Afghanistan files, second was in October the Iraq documents and the third was um, November, December, there was, was the, um, the um, embassy stuff. Collateral murder was uh, Iraqi stuff, which was in October, the, the famous movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know this girl? She was the one who made that. So 2010. And we got a question related. So for that, doing that, three big, big, big leaks. She was put into jail. Question is, for how long? 60 years, 34 years, 44 years, 34 years, or 100 years. Which is, um, you can take 100 years as equal to forever. <laughs> so, okay. Ich bin gedacht, der hat auch den Weißen Bart. Ja, der verleiht unendlich Intelligenz. Oh! Dicke Hose, wa? <lacht> Orange ist früh dran. Okay, so. So the correct answer is too long, but more specifically is uh, <laughs> B, as uh, the orange uh, said, uh, 45 uh, years, but correct answer is 35 years. Yeah, it is. Yeah, in fact, is. This is what the um, um, Staatsanwalt, ah, thank you. The prosecutor wanted to have 100 years. And yeah, thank you. And yeah, this is what the, in fact, what you get and got. So yeah, yeah. He will be, if he would get Gnade, oh, I do, thank you. Yeah, he, he might get out 2000. 20, but I guess no American president can tolerate that, so you will be stuck for in for quite a long time. Risk no health. Now we got some explicit images, so we got no children here, but you're free to look at them or not. I, or not. I, this is on, is not the most evil stuff you can find, but I just say that so that nobody comes up late and say, "Hey, what did you do?" You know that, okay, and. 
for sure, you know, that quite creative because you can um, anidogen somebody, um, put him down, and have a really creative thing of putting him under high voltage at the same time. This is the place where that happened in that prison, which was crazily, um, totally empty before <laughs> the Americans and the British came there because Saddam has everybody put out and uh, related to an uh, uh, amnesty. But the question is, who leaked that story? The Abu Ghraib story. So we know the pictures, but who did it? Was it Edward Snowden? Oops. Was, this, was it anonymous? Just by WikiLeaks and... Was it Chelsea, Manning? Or was it Joe Darby? Yes, it's the last question, and it's one to one. So, so if if you both, if we're we very fast, we will get one other question. So, if you both have the right answer. So, Edward Snowden, anonymous, Chelsea Manning, Joe Darby. Thank you. Okay. I have a slight suspicion that this was answered by exclusion, but nevertheless, yeah. it's correct. Joe Darby was the one. Yeah. So, yeah. This one, it was, the fact, fact is, this story was brought out to the public several times till it had impact, which is really crazy because if you see that, quite expected images and this was one guy and I'll bring them too because he was one of the one it doesn't look like maybe spontaneously you wouldn't think he's one of the good guys but in fact he is <laughs> like he liked his gun but uh, he liked the truth too so and he made a famous quote at least I think is quite famous quote uh, in front of the court when he was asked and he confesses that that's true I have seen that all and being asked what was his feeling when he saw that, he said the best description for that is Apocalypse Now meets Shining, and that's what he saw in Abu Ghraib. And I have the fear that he was absolutely right. So. So yeah, we have uh, two, two, so no winner, so we can go on with another question and hope that somebody... Yeah, so this is the... We're in time? Okay, so, last question. Maybe. So. Since how many days is that snowed in Moscow now on his way to a third country? 427, 538, 657, or 380? How many days is that Snowden in Moscow right now? Next time you do the show, I do the guessing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Spannung, Spannung. So, this uh, question will not be well sent. <laughs> <laughs> Either they are both right or both wrong. I got a little day sent both wrong, man. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit wrong. Yeah, okay. Luckily, we got some um, other questions for that. So, we come back to Germany. So this is a guy you um, might not know, and this question is about what's the legal situation of whistleblowers. And because we talk too much with the United States and not everything is bad there, there are some things quite good there, even if you wouldn't expect that. And concrete in relation to whistleblowers. Because uh, this is a man he brought out, so uh, its name is Rainer Moormann, and he's the reason why we don't have a thing like uh, these uh, fusion, is this the right word, fusion reactors, nuclear reactors? Is that right? He's one very important reason why these things are not in the field, luckily, now. Because he 
For 30 years he worked with that, and he was the guy who really knew that they don't work. And he brought that out. But many things would be much easier for that guy if we would have a law, which we have in the United States and in other kinds we have in the UK too. This law is called Kitam. So my question to you is, what does this special law do to support whistleblowers? Is it A, providing them with money? B, it takes care for publicity? It takes care for job protection? or for their anonymity. What does Kitam provide? Beyond. I think this is worth to be the last question because it's a difficult one. Okay. So, uh, red candidate says uh, D, their anonymity is uh, protected by this law, and the orange candidate says uh, their job is protected, but we say it's the money. <laughs> it's all about the money. Get that, we're in capitalism. Hey. <laughs> now, this is a law which, which guarantees you if you um, do whistleblowing, especially in the public area, if you find a public institution and you blow the whistle, that you can participate on the money which is saved because you blew the whistle. So it's a business model, model in fact, and, there, and if you would calculate that for that guy, Rainer Moment I introduced to you, you would see he would be quite a multiple millionaire right now because he saved hundreds of million euros. By that. So we got, unfortunately, we got no more time now, so we won't find out who's really the best of you cool guys. Um, yeah, um, I like, so I cannot ask you that question. Sorry. I skip it. Okay, I want to thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thanks for your. Um, Participation, any interesting about whistleblowers, just mail me and yeah. See you. Bye. And you both get your prizes for sure. Thank you. Thank you.